Today I would like to talk about those structures left behind by the Roman Empire which still stand relatively complete today. For most will think that everything the Romans ever built now stands in ruins. I think quite a few people will be surprised to learn that there are in fact a goodly number of structures which have survived the ravages of time. The majesty of Rome in some few places does indeed live on. Most will naturally be familiar with the magnificent Colosseum in Rome. Not that many will have heard of the amphitheatre of El Gem in Tunisia. But in Verona and in Nîmes there are amphitheatres which are still in use today. In the French town of Nîmes bullfights have been held ever since the theatre's restoration in 1853. In modern days it has also been used for rock concerts. In the Italian city of Verona the arena is used occasionally for rock and pop concerts but is more widely famed for the operas it frequently hosts. But talking of Nîmes it is also the home to a beautifully preserved Roman temple which is known as the Maison Carré. It has undergone some surface restoration work in recent years to remove the dirt built up over time, more than likely through modern air pollution. It is now truly a glorious example of a surviving Roman temple. As a temple it is far from alone. In the Piazza Bocca della Verità in Rome still stand today two little temples from the age of ancient Rome. One is attributed to victorious Hercules and about the other one one is not quite sure. It may have been dedicated to Portunus or to Fortuna Virilis. A similar little temple to that can be found in Pula in Croatia, namely the Temple of Augustus. This particular example was in fact hit by a bomb during an allied air raid in the Second World War and was thereafter painstakingly put back together again. The finest temple by far to survive is the astonishing Pantheon in Rome. It was originally commissioned by Agrippa, the great general of Emperor Augustus. At this initial construction it was built in the classical Hellenistic fashion, but in 80 AD it was largely destroyed by fire. So under Emperor Hadrian one then sought to reconstruct it to a different plan. So the classical entrance was retained, yet the redesigned structure now sported a magnificent dome of Roman concrete. The reason this building survived in such pristine fashion was that early on it was converted into a Christian church. An even more spectacular religious building is to be found in Istanbul, once Constantinople, if you forgive my digressing beyond classical Roman history. Here stands the remarkable Hagia Sophia, the basilica built by Emperor Justinian after the previous church on the site had been destroyed by fire. It was completed in 537 AD. After the conquest by the Turks, the magnificent building was turned into a mosque and over time minarets were added. But more importantly, the great Hagia Sophia was to become the prototype of a grand mosque. Domes have ever since been associated with mosques. In fact, one can clearly see the influence of the Hagia Sophia on the great Islamic architectural masterpiece that is the Blue Mosque in the very same city, Istanbul. For another very old church, look no further than the Santa Maria Maggiore in Rome. It has been updated many times, having papal money lavished upon it, but the core basilica was consecrated in 434 AD, so still under the rule of the Western Roman Emperor. Theatres have also survived, more often than not as various local potentates thought them useful, and so you will find very well kept surviving structures in Orange in France, in Merida in Spain, and at the site of Aspendos in Turkey. Back in Rome you will also find the Aurelian Walls, which are the defences left behind by Emperor Aurelius, complete with many of the gates. Here are the Porta Asinaria and the Porta Latina. And across the river in Rome you will find the papal fortress, the Castel Sant'Angelo. The Great Rotunda began as the Mausoleum of Hadrian, in which the remains of a succession of emperors were laid to rest. It was only much later that the popes decided it would make a good fortress and so the basic structure survives until this day. Back in Spain you will find the magnificent Roman Alcantara Bridge still standing tall and at the northwestern reaches of the peninsula still stands the old Roman lighthouse known as the Tower of Hercules. One type of Roman structure which has survived in several places is the Triumphal Arch. Here is one of the finest, the Arch of Titus in Rome celebrating his conquest of Jerusalem. One can clearly see how the Roman example led to many copies of the idea, such as the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. But arches were not the only way in which the Romans commemorated victories. Another way to do so was by means of victory columns. The most spectacular such examples still stand in Rome today. 
They are the column of Marcus Aurelius celebrating his campaign against the Marcomanni, the Quadi and the Sarmatians. The other, yet finer example is the column of Emperor Trajan. You will have to forgive me my pronunciation of said emperor, I am one of those people who believes that Trajan just doesn't sound correct. Unlike Hadrian or Mark Antony, the name doesn't properly anglicize. And so with Marcus Ulpius Trajanus, Trajan is the best I can do. Meanwhile, one thing to consider when it comes to these columns is that they are not solid. They each indeed have a spiral staircase inside of them. In fact, look carefully enough and you will see little slit windows in the sides to help illuminate the way for anyone heading to the top. Just as with the Arc de Triomphe, so too were these victory columns taken as examples to emulate. Here is the victory column of Napoleon in the Place Vendôme in Paris. Trajan's column stands in what is left of Trajan's Forum, and one of the structures which made up said Forum is today known as Trajan's Market. It is a fabulous example of what can only be described as a surviving ancient Roman shopping mall complete with individual outlets. As a brief aside, mundane Roman structures, much like the market, can be found both in Rome itself, but more notably so in Ostia. This type of building is called an insula. These would have been the tenement buildings, the type of which most of the Roman poor inhabited in the old city. These buildings have not survived complete, but their very substantial remains provide us a very good impression of what they once looked like. But to finish on a high note, the Romans are famed for the great ability they showed in controlling water. For these purposes, they would build aqueducts. At Segovia in Spain stands a fantastic example of their craft, but even this is dwarfed by the unbelievable Pont du Gard in southern France. The enormous structure carried the water uppermost and on a lower level the road bridge. And now for a bonus fact. Back in Rome you will find the church Santa Maria in Trastevere. The floor plan of this church is truly ancient, but the basic structure seems simply medieval. However, for the eagle-eyed, there is a curio in this church. For take a look at the columns that separate the nave from the aisles. They are not alike. They are more than a little mix and match. For they were not made for this structure. They were taken from the ruins of the giant baths of Caracalla, a palatial ancient Roman public bathhouse. On that note, I shall bring to an end our tour of existing structures of ancient Rome. I hope you found this interesting. If so, please do not forget to give this video a like, to subscribe and to hit the notification button. And so all that remains for me to say is, that's all from the Sabah Pass for now. Thank you very much and goodbye.